Hello everyone, um, sorry for the interruptions. Um, uh, Philip had some uh, change in schedule so we had to make sure that uh, we push it a bit earlier to suit his, his programs and yeah we wanted to make sure that you guys get as much content as possible. Uh, thanks for everyone joining in. Uh, Philip is going to be with us in just a minute and we'll be sharing with him about um, various topics that are going to come up. Um, thanks for all those that are following Kratos. Make sure you tell everyone around to follow Kratos for all the rugby content on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. And yeah, also we have the Kratos shop, kratosbrand.com, and we have a blog and we have a YouTube channel. So you make sure that uh, you follow all those platforms as well. Philip is going to be with us in a bit. We had to push this um, earlier so that we make sure that we have as much time with him as possible because... He has something with his team later on. He's in France. That's where the lockdown found him. Yeah, so we're sorry and we apologize for the change in time, but bear with us. This might be might have to be a, a, a two-part kind of interview, kind of chat. So we're going to do as much as possible right now. And then uh, when, when time comes on, then we shall do something later. So let me try and get uh, Philip online right now. I hope you guys are able to hear me. Yeah, we're just waiting for Philip to get online. Otherwise, guys, um, feel free to also send in your comments and your questions if you want to actually engage with him. Thanks for all those that have joined in. Charlotte, uh, Vastin, Mutebi Rodney, uh, Mwanje. We are going to just be having Philip in a bit. And yet again, I want to say I apologize for the change in time. It's just that uh, programs had to change uh, with Philip's schedule for today. We're waiting for Philip to join the live and as we're also waiting for Philip to join the line, please let everyone know that we are going live earlier than scheduled because of some unforeseen things, but just let everyone know, please. Thanks for guys that are joining in. Ragava Ben, uh, Timothy, Mofire. Thank you. I can see your comments. I can see everything. Hilary Semusu, you're welcome. Just to get Philip on Kappa Kemeze thanks for joining Do you remember that um, kratosbrand.com, the website, you can be able to find all your, all your rugby content from the blogs that we release on a daily basis, on a weekly basis as well. Uh, you can also visit our YouTube channel, Kratos Sports Rugby. You can always subscribe and follow our social media, uh, that is uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, where we keep you guys informed, especially in these times when rugby content is very, very scarce. We try as much as possible to keep you guys informed. Thanks for those that continuously follow, engage with us. And yeah, I hope you guys are keeping safe, um, keeping well. We don't know how long this lockdown is going to last, but hopefully we try to move as quick as possible. Always wash your hands. And I hope that you guys are having a good Sunday. Uh, Imanzi and Louis Semuju, thanks for joining. Remember, guys... Uh, for all those that are here, feel free to leave your comments, feel free to leave your your questions here, yeah, I will share them. And we might have to do this in a, in a, in a two-series basis kind of thing, where we have a part one and a part two, because um, Philip has kind of a busy schedule that came up abruptly, so we might have to break the, the, the chat down into two, where we have a, a second version communicated on a later date. I'm just waiting for Philip to get online, because he's up and down. Is connecting in a few. Yeah. Thanks for guys joining, Kelvin. Thanks. I hope you guys can hear me well as we wait for Philip to join. Uh, Bruno, thank you. 
uh, Danga Gwech, uh, some of you guys' handles are very complex for me to read, but I, I appreciate the fact that you guys are here with us. Tell your friends who are not here, your people, that uh, the live is starting earlier than usual. Just waiting for Philip to join. There's lots of content, rugby highlights on our YouTube channel. Uh, podcasts is how we've been re uh, producing some lockdown podcasts as well during this time uh two editions so far uh first one was is, was with uh josh Intale. second one was with uh edwin wawire and uh actually the, the second one was, was with edwin wawire Kappa Kemezi, you're saying that I hook you up with my Baba. DM me, don't worry. There must be a, con a connection problem. We we're trying to wait for Philip to join. Philip, I've sent you, uh, I've sent you a request. Please, please confirm and join with us. Yeah. Hello, um, how are you? Can you yeah. hear me properly? Yeah, how is it in France, right? Oh, how is everything? How's the lockdown for you? First and foremost, I'd love to thank you for hosting me. Mm. I thank God everything is okay. Mm. Taking a day at a time. It's a bit hard, but you have to adapt, you know. So, yeah, so how are you actually keeping busy in this time, actually? What are you doing? Do you guys even get time to play some touch or anything like that? Uh, we were on a lockdown, like no one was allowed to move mm -hmm. unless you have a, spe a specific document you present to the officers in case they get you because our lockdown was based on fines as well. If they find you outside and you don't have any genuine reason of being outside, you pay mm -hmm. a fine of 135 euros. So I've just been keeping home, trying to keep myself busy as I can. I do home workouts and avoiding people. Yeah. Oh, that's actually very, very important. And I think um, not to waste so much time because I know you, you, uh, you're busy today. Maybe we'll have to break this down into yeah. two bits. Uh, but let's start from there, the COVID, uh, the whole COVID situation and the masks that you, you, you were sharing with the clubs, which I think was a very, very good initiative. Mm -hmm. um, just to say thank you for that. Mm -hmm. You're uh, welcome. We received some of the warriors... Uh, Warriors um, uh, yeah. masks as well. Uh, was that your personal initiative or it was uh, part of something bigger? What, what was the whole story behind okay. that? I, I was talking to one of my friends on phone because it's the only way we are keeping in touch, you know, talking to people far away from you through the internet and all. So I was talking to one of my friends, then he's like, hey, man, this situation is going to get tough on us and with the new guidelines of masks, I don't know how some players in Uganda, the way you know the situation in Ugandan rugby, how they will be able to get the masks and all. So I'm like, you know, he's like, why don't you just help the boys, you know? You know the situation, you've been in the situation. And I'm like, why only the boys? I don't want to be segregative and, you know, we are all one we play the yeah. same sport so i'm like let me do this since the boys are also dispersed in different teams so let me try and let me try and share with all the teams so that is how i came up with the distribution of the masks oh that, that's actually good um, yeah just uh talking about uh life in france uh what do you have to, what's your take on it? How is life in France? How is the weather? How is the food, um, the language? How are you able to cope? Do you know French very well? No, I do not know French, but I'm learning French. Uh, life is not hard, but, you know, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. It's a personal challenge or a challenge to anyone. You just have to adapt to the new environment and see what you can do to fit in, you know? So I'm learning the language. And also adapting to the food, you know, we are not used to eating bread, rice all the time. So we are used to our kaunga. In Kenya, we call it ugali. So I was about 
And <laughs> with all the portions, we being brought to eat to eat. You know, we are used to our portion, our yeah, but, meals. What so now you have to, to get used to a totally different meal, you know. But I'm adapting and I try to pick what I can eat and see what can push me for a night or a day and that's how I'm taking it. Yeah, okay. But so now when you're on pitch, actually this is something that I've always wanted to ask you. When you're on pitch, especially with the back line, I know there are so many moves that have to be called, so much communication. How do you do it with, I'm sure, your, your French teammates and everyone from across the world? What's the, the easiest language you use to communicate? So, I was lucky. When I came, I had most of the players in the back line speak English. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the fly-off understands yeah. English. My 13 understands English. And then, personally, I, I understand English and my other winger. So it wasn't so hard for me because they would call a move. The scrum off would ask the player, of course, the move. Then mm. I rush to the 13. Oh, the other guy who knows English, then he tells me this one and this one. Then I'm like, okay, then we go. So it wasn't so hard since it's more of a running team and I love running. So the moves were not so new to me, but the language was the only tricky part in the beginning, but I went on adapting well and I was excited to play some more and the pandemic came up, so it wasn't my call, but I was really into it now and the weather was getting better. Oh, that's good. But I have to say congratulations on the unbeaten no, 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 we didn't, personally, mm -hmm. I didn't lose any game because when I came, I played, then I came back to Uganda to represent in the Challenger Series. So while I was away, they lost mm. two games. When I came back, and that is when the pandemic arose, and that's how, but we were lucky to be topping the pool. So by the time they cancelled the league, mm. we were ahead by seven points. So the Federation gave us the championship and we were promoted to Federal 2, which was good altogether. I was all excited. I wanted to play some more, and then Beda Reed came up and I didn't have any other option but to take it since it's in the direction that I want to go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, um, just to inform the people that are joining us, thank you. We're with Philip Okorach. Uh, many of you know him as a juice or the brand PW15. And I'm sure there's so many of you guys who are watching that actually want to, to know much about him. So we're going to have to break this chat down into two. Today we are going to be talking about the new transfer and life in France majorly. So when we get time later, we, we shall agree with the time with, uh, with you, Philip, so that we can be able to talk about things uh, more in depth from the past and life at Hana mixed and everything. So, but for today, let, we shall be focusing on uh, France so that we can allow you to go and do other things as okay. well. However, um, just to, before we build up to the new move, I wanted to ask um, what when you're comparing like sports, uh, having played club rugby in, uh, in Uganda, club rugby in Kenya, and now comparing it to, to, to uh, France yeah. in Borges. How, how exactly, what's the difference? What differences do you see? How is the organization that side in, com in comparison to this side? How, uh, how is it? <clears throat> Maybe you can tell us. Well, like you've said, I've played in Uganda, I've played in Kenya, and now I'm in France. I wouldn't want to speak too early because I've just come to, to France and I'm still trying mm. to learn the dynamics, how the game is going. But but for the short period I've been here, I see they they follow more of the structure. They want to play what is on paper, you know. When the coach says we are going with structure A, it is what we are going to do. So I think it's more of structure. It's more structured compared to Uganda. And I wouldn't say it's too far away from the Kenyan rugby because Kenyan rugby is as well competitive in its own way. And yeah, I believe the toughness I got in Kenya is the one that is helping me here and it's making my transition easy, you know. So we are not badly off. Just a few things here and there and we can be on the same track with them. But And then they also love grooming their own. So it is hard to just pick someone from outside, you know? 
So their structures are from the lower levels till up. So I think we can pick a leaf from that. If we just groom our own from down, the basics, and then we bring them up, not getting someone from anywhere. You see the size, you say, hey, you can play rugby. It's not like that. So by the time they reach up there, they are well-versed with the game and it's not hard, you know. But they do a lot of structured plays and that is how they take their guns. Oh, that's actually, that's actually impressive to say back. Um, so actually, which leads me to my next question. Um, uh, uh, they moved to, to Borges. How did that happen? I mean, you were in Cap Brass and... It was a very good, I think, a, I don't know how many seasons they were, two, three? Two and a half. Two yeah. and a half. So how did the, 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 the transition for, from Cabras to, to Borges happen? So I believe in God. And God has a plan for everyone. No one knows what the future holds for them, you know? So even leaving heathens to Cabras, no one expected it, you know? But it happened. So I don't hold myself back. When I, when I get an opportunity, I take it up. When I was at Cabras, I played. Mm. I failed to win the Kenya Cup, but I won the Enterprise Cup. I won the Sevens and won individual accolades. So towards the end of that season, 2019, I felt like I needed a new challenge, at least going to another team also. But not in Kenya or in Uganda. So as I was thinking of it, then a friend of mine that I met in Amsterdam when we were playing the Amsterdam Sevens. So this friend, mm. is, this friend told me, man, you can do big in France, you know? Then I'm like, it's not easy to come out of Africa to come to France. We've tried, but it's not easy. But if you get me connections, maybe we can try something out, you know? So this guy kept in touch with me. We kept talking here and there. And I think it was the right time. I wouldn't say it was planned or something, but God knew everything. And by the time everything I had finished doing, like in Uganda, in Kenya, then this came up because I didn't have now so much responsibilities. So I decided to just take it up and give it a try since it's towards my dream goal, you know? So I just came to give it my best and see where I'll go. Yeah. Yeah, maybe just to give guys a, a broader picture of how, how things are. The Federal 2, uh, how far is it from the top four? Uh, so they have different Federals. So it's Pro 14, no, Top 14, then Pro D2, then Federal 1, Federal 2, Federal 3. Then there's another championship down. Then division, then amateur. It's like, it's, it's, a long, it's a long hierarchy, but top 14 is the target now. And that is where I want to be in the near future. Uh, definitely, would love to see you personally. I'd love to see you in in, in in like too long colors because I know that is that is where the big challenge is. We'd love to see one of our own playing like in the Champions Cup. It would be very interesting to see you like against Owen Farrell, who is one of my favorite players Amen. in the in the Champions Cup. Amen. Mm -hmm. But so how how is your how is your week? How uh, maybe you could describe for us how your week is in preparation for game day usually from that side in France. Like how many training sessions do you guys oh, have in a day or in so a week? At um, Bush, because yeah, even right yeah. now I'm still in Bush, but I'm hoping to move soon to my new team. But I'm still in Bush till my contract ends because I'm still a responsibility to them for now. Till my contract comes to an end. Then I move to the next team. But yeah, at Bush we used to train three times a week. So we train on Tuesday evening, Wednesday evening, Friday evening. Then Saturday, it's more of what we're going to do in the game, like on the board. And then Sunday, we are in for the games. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's cool. 
Um, for everyone that's watching with us, thanks for joining. Um, inform, uh, inform the guys that are not here that, yeah, yeah. we are live. Sorry that we had to come a bit earlier, but everything is going to be on our Instagram TV later on still for those that couldn't catch it. And uh, yeah, we are with Philip Okorach. I remember you can send in your comments, you can send in your, your questions if you have any, um, anything you want to ask or say or tell him. Yeah, we'll be able to discuss it here. Um, maybe one thing that I, I wanted to ask, what's, what's the, most, uh, the, the most common position you are playing in, in Boz? What's the most common position? Because personally, me, I've actually I've had discussions with a lot of people. Yeah, and I yeah, think yeah, 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 yeah. That they should try to out at 13. At that, I believe you can so, play 13. I don't know. When I came, mm. me, I'm a back. Okay, I've played on the wing, I've played 13, I've played 10, but I love playing at fullback. That is my number one position. But I can play anywhere. So in in the back, not anywhere on the pitch, but in the back. So when I reached here, mm. I watched the first game. I didn't play because I reached on Friday evening. And then on Saturday, it was more of a board session and all. Then Sunday, we traveled for the game. So I just watched the game. I didn't play. So the number 13 pulled an hamstring in that game that I was watching. So mm. he was out. And when we started training the following week, the coach asked me, of course, do you think you can fit in in 13? You can. Then I told him, like I've told you, I can play on the wing. I can play 13. I can play 15. So he said, let me try you out on 13 this weekend because you saw our 13 go to work got injured. And I'm like, okay, no problem. And then that is how I ended up playing 13. So I played it for two games. And then when this guy came back, I went back. I was given the number 15 jersey and that that was... The rest was history. So no one could take it away from me. How many? Yeah. How many tries? Oh, so I made only four. The weather was not good for me, but I did my part. I did assists, and I I I got the few points that I did. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of weather, mm. um, was it winter? Was it what? How do you handle those cold conditions, especially if you're used to playing like in, in Uganda, where yes. you play at the two thirty two thirty sun, and that one, that how one, do you that one has really been. A struggle for me, but you just have to adapt, you know. Uh, you buy the warm gear. You try and keep yourself warm as much as you can. We have some things we rub on ourselves and to keep you warm on pitch. So they gave me some gel you rub on those exposed parts so that they do not freeze. But of course, they still freeze, though they help compared to when you play without rubbing them on the exposed parts. So that's how I managed. But okay. I just had to adapt because it was really cold. Mm. Mm, okay. So uh, talking about a a SBC, how did that happen? Well, how did that move happen? Was again just people are noticing the talent? You know, or you know, was there a you know, you know what 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 I normally do is I do my part to the best that I can, and then. I leave the rest to God, who I believe in so much. So this this move happened like a blessing. You know, someone texted me. Okay, this guy texted me on Facebook. And I replied to everyone. I never ignore any anyone's message or what. So I replied to this guy on Facebook. Then he's like, what's up? What's your next move? I see you in Bush. I'm like, yes, I'm in Bush. What's your next move? I've been with you. I've watched you in Amsterdam. I've been following you. And what do you think you want to be in the near future? I told him I want to, to play rugby professionally. And that is why I'm in France now. He said, okay, I play for this team. And me, I've been watching you. I, I, I would want you to come and play for us because you're a good player. And I'm like, I'm open to any good move because... All I want is to get connections to go up. 
I'm using this as a stepping stone, you know. It's hard to come from someone to call you from top 14 that you come, you're from, you're from Uganda or where it's hard. They only see South Africa in Africa, by the way. They take Africa to be, South Africa to be the best, you know. In Kenya, they don't want to know. In Uganda, it is hard, you know. It affected me when I was in England. Mm. So that was in 2015 when I was in England. It affected me as well. They said, no. From Uganda, no. They don't seem to believe that there is rugby out there as well, you know. So the Bush deal came up as a blessing, like to to give me a platform to to show what I have to the French rugby fraternity. And that is how I'm getting to better read. So this guy texts me and we talk. Then he says, okay, give me your number. I'm going to give my coach the number. He will call you. Then you will discuss. And then when I got to talk to the coach, things were just smooth. You know, it was like, it was already planned. Like I, t- I told you, God has a plan for everyone. Like everything was already planned. We didn't even struggle much. Then he said, okay, before that, I need to talk to the Bush management and see if it is possible. I don't want to rush anything or what, because, you know, then we called the Bush management. And as well, the Bush management has really helped me. They've, 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 they've been so good to me. I don't, I don't even know how to explain it because they've done everything. Even this coming up, they just said, Philip, we knew you were going to go. Because actually, when I just come, there was a team that was on my neck already. Calling the coach, calling the coach and the president. The president said, no, leave the boy concentrate for now. Maybe you will talk in April or May. So when this came up and they called him, he just said, Philip, Mm. me, I know this is what you're meant for. So I wish you all the best. I just want you, I just want them to treat you right because not everyone is going to treat you like we've been treating you. So I talked to the other coach and everything was okay. And yeah, that is how I ended up signing because I have my manager and agent who helps me on everything. So it worked out well and he said, yeah, it was a better move because there were three moves, but was the better move and yeah i'm happy to be there and i can't wait for what god has in plan for me and the season ahead yeah that, that's that's good to hear of course everything in god's timing very very important yeah what part of france are you in right now i mean bush it's in this central part of france like in the middle of france next to paris yeah, but now I'm going down in the south. And, going to southern yeah, and they're telling me it's better, the weather is warmer there, so... <laughs> eh? Have you heard of the stories of, of the south of France? Yes. The lifestyle stories of the south I've of heard, France? I've heard, but... Well, it's always good to give it a try and see. Yeah. So um, just ask, in your free time, what do you do? Actually, how, how is accommodation? How do you handle your free time? Like when you're not with the team, you're not training. How do you keep busy? How do you keep yourself engaged? Mm. I try and watch movies. I talk to my family through the internet. When I get some free time, I, I do some home workouts to just keep in shape. And now that I have a new challenge ahead of me, so it's pushing me to work even harder because I need to prove myself, you know? So, yeah, I try so much to keep fit and keep in shape and also catch up with my friends because I miss home as well. So they keep me close and when I talk to them, oh, and most times I love listening to music. So when I listen to Ugandan music, and my doors are closed. I feel like I'm home, so I don't miss home so much. Yeah. Okay, so if they if they put you in the middle of that town, where you are, can you be able to move around without any directions from other, from mm. like people who have been there longer? Are you now free enough to move comfortably mm. like that? We, we thank God for technology. So we have Google Maps on our phones. You can reach anywhere you want. And that's how easy it is. I can get on the train. 
in case anything is hard, I, I can't say it. I use my Google Translator. I have, I have a translator app on my phone. So I just type in what I want and yeah, it makes it easy for me to move around. And I also have some friends from the Pacific Islanders and they know English well. So I'm always with them trying to teach me a few things here and there. And yeah, we catch up like that. Um, has the has the contract for ASBC already been signed? And if so, uh, is it are you at liberty to share um, how long it is? Yes, I've already signed. It's a one year contract, just like the one Bush gave me. Apparently, you can't get you. It's hard for you to get a contract for more than one year because if if I live here for five years. I'll be able to get a contract for more than one year. But before that, I'll always be getting a one-year contract, one-year contract, one-year contract, unless otherwise. Because the visa itself, they first give you a one-year visa. So that's why I'm getting a one-year contract. Yeah, okay. So anyway, uh, besides the rugby and all, um, maybe there are people that will want to know outside rugby, um, things like uh, your life. What other passions do you have <clears throat> besides rugby? Well, I love making friends. I love listening to music. I hang out with friends once in a while. I'm not more of a reading person, but mm. I try. When I get time, I read a few things and yeah, that's basically my life. Any side hustles, any business? Yes, I do have side hustles, but I wouldn't want to expose all of them here. But yes, I have I have my side hustles. I, I, I am into farming, I'm into transportation, and yeah, I just flow with what is in line with my things that I like, you know. Yeah, and um uh, just talking about the brand, the brand um, uh, Philip Okorach, PW15. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you, you, uh, you or you, you, uh, the company that represents you has thought about uh, merchandising or like endorsement deals. Do you have any? Do you plan to have any? Maybe you can say like a clothing wear, sports clothing wear. Because um, just to say that in sports, I think in rugby right now, uh, you, you must be the most popular person from Uganda. <laughs> so I think is something that would be good to, to really look at. I don't know if you've thought about it. Well, like I told you, no one knows what the future holds for them tomorrow, but everything is in line. Uh, I was doing a clothing business. I was selling rugby jerseys at some time, and then I left it for my friend because I had to juggle so many things here and there. But, well, everything is in line, and like you said, I try so much to take it of an advantage and reach out to different people. So I'm looking at it in that angle as well. And maybe in the near future, I'll also have a brand of my own. Mm. Well, let's hope for the best. And we hope because um, one of the things that uh, such certain periods like this COVID season and where sport in general is heading has shown us is that uh, a lot of things yeah, need yeah. to change for clubs. Yeah, it's, for a lesson, it's a lesson for very to... many people. Yeah. Person, personally, yeah. I, I, I didn't ever think rugby would come to a pause, you know. I've always played, I've always loved playing the game all, all year, despite <clears throat> having injuries and you're on a break and all, but if I'm okay and normal, I just want to be running all day, every day. So, yeah, it's a lesson. You have to know this life after rugby there is life without rugby so it's a hard one but yeah we have to find a way of dealing with it you know yeah true and as we are heading towards the conclusion um i just wanted to ask actually from what you've just said mm -hmm. um covid and the lessons we are learning what what lessons in your regard have you actually learned besides even in rugby, just generally in life, what has this season taught you? One, taking a day at a time.
because tomorrow is not guaranteed you know and then also <clears throat> i've learned to get close to people communicating more because we tend to neglect certain things and give time to different things you know and forgetting your family but this period has really changed everything you talk more to your families it's bringing the bond more you know and also personally i've also learned that you need to have a plan b somewhere you know say now like us or go for sportsmen and all you need to have a good saving culture because people that have been saving well are the ones that are surviving now you know if if yeah, you've true. not been saving the little you had i believe by the the third week of lockdown your funds are running out you know and if you don't have a plan b of like another source of income and this one is tied up you know it it will be hard but yeah like i've said i'm taking it day at a time that is what i've learned and also taking time serious because tomorrow is not guaranteed yeah okay and uh, maybe maybe my last question to you would be um uh you had one in uh, Uganda cup game against pirates and you had one in Scotland England. was in it England. Scotland England mm-hmm. how i mean because personally i i i can i can feel your pain because of a broken a leg yeah. oh, and i i i say I, i can even admit that up to now i don't think i have fully um, yes, yes, yes. Like, I, i remember i remember I, i i saw you also got injured yeah there is healing mm. of the leg <laughs> but then there is a psychological thing <laughs> where you know rugby is a yeah. game and yourself back into full contact after all that pain how have you been able to manage it especially for you it happened twice mm. and because your story is pretty remarkable <clears throat> man. for many people that have been like well this is well it, the man. first the first leg break was a scary one i always feared to break a bone or anything and my mom discouraged me so much from playing the game she always told me you're going to break your small and all but love for the game kept pushing me you know so when i got the first actually before breaking my leg like in 2012 we had played pirates and it was still the same man anthony chinen it was buffalo's pirates at chadond so i don't know what he did it was a behind tackle and my knee got a shock so it was like a tense shock so <clears throat> it wasn't that bad i got up limping i had my crutches and i went home with crutches that night then my mom told me finally you see what you've been looking for you know that was it was a friday game actually it was a friday game so that night they told me don't put so much pressure on the leg use this and this so i used it <clears throat> i went back home my mom told me that and but since i loved the game i said ah this is part of the sport Pe- people get injuries i've seen worse injuries than this so the following day <clears throat> since i just slept and cooled it off that friday night I went back to Chad and took back the crutches. I was okay. You know? So that was the first time I almost got injured. So I went back to school. So after A6, I come back in what? In Heathens now. So after my A6, Heathens okay. told me we want you to come blah blah. I told him, "Well, if there's no problem, I'm, I'm a Chad and boy, but all I need is tuition." if you're paying my tuition i'll come and play for events which they didn't have any problem with you know that's how i ended up in events but events has always been my dream team as well so it was just <clears throat> taking advantage of the situation you know then from there i came to events so that leg break 
again the same man. But this time round, he got me. Like he has, maybe he had wanted, or maybe that is what he wanted. Because after the leg break, he said, Akonkamaze, balete stretch abakatuale. You know, that is what I had in my ears. So I didn't know I'd broken my leg. You know, when I tried to get up, the leg was heavy. So I just sat down. The people that were near are the ones that even had it or even saw it. Me, I hadn't seen it. Only to feel the leg being heavier than normal. That's when I noticed I had broken my leg. I was in shock. I wasn't feeling any pain. Then when I saw my sister crying, that's when my tears started coming out as well. So I just went. They took me to the ambulance. Dr. Stone was there. So many other doctors. Ah, For me, at that moment, I knew ah, my rugby had come to an end, you know. But with time, seeing different surgeons, counselors, physios, they told me, no, you're still a young boy and your, your break was clean. It will heal and you'd, you'll be okay. Don't even get worried, you know. But at that moment, I was so down. I thought I would never play rugby again and all. But with time, I kept on seeing what they were telling me was becoming a reality. So I accepted the fact that I broke my leg and I just have to take the healing process serious. And that is how I managed to heal from it. And what they said actually was true because this broken leg became even stronger than this leg that hadn't broken, you know. And then coincidentally, it happened in England as well. Then... So I believe it was a blessing. Was it, this- it was a blessing in disguise. No, it was now the other leg. So they were now on the same level, you know. <laughs> and then I, I took it as a blessing in disguise because now the second leg didn't worry me so much because I knew I would heal from it. Because the first one healed and I was okay. I wasn't feeling any pain or anything. So I'm like, ah, even this one will heal. I just have to give it time, not rush it, and it will be okay. Within no time, it was okay. And they also, they both have stories that I'll never forget. And yeah, they keep pushing me. So how, how, how what, what exactly was your, was it like your plan, your program for actually recovery? Like what would you advise people to do, especially from broken legs? Well, do not rush it because we all want to play. But you want to rush and come back to play. Yet the leg hasn't healed well, you know. And then also strengthening and conditioning is also lacking in Ugandan rugby, by the way. So those are certain things that I got to learn and I took it upon myself to to give it a try and do it on my own. With I, I, I thank Sogi because my first leg break, Sogi was a tough man on my case and told me, no, this is something small. You can get back from it. He even took me to the gym in Mukono. He was pumping me and giving me leg exercise and doing so many things with him. And I was lucky to get back on my feet and come back stronger. Kudos to Sogi and so many other physios. But Sogi was so much into it because he took his initiative and and got me from... Because I was in Mukono at UCU, so and for him, he lives in Mukono. So he told me he would come and pick me if I'm at hostel, he picks me, we go to the gym, he gives me different exercises, and that is how I came back from the injury. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's good. So um, I think we're going to just spare a few minutes to read some comments and uh, maybe some questions. Uh, guys, you can feel free to ask uh, Philip anything you want to ask. Make sure it is within the realms of what he can answer. Please don't ask him for his phone number here unless you're an agent. <clears throat> uh, yes, that, uh, this, you see I'm that saying, guy, um, you see that guy, Prince the... Romeo, who is saying, my bro, he's actually the one I met in Amsterdam yes. and he's the one who has been mm-hmm. helping me so much to, to come this side and yeah, he did a lot. Cheers to you, Romeo. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's actually very good. Uh, uh, just looking through the comments, uh, someone asking me about an in-house barber. I don't have an in-house <laughs> barber. Uh, don't get me arrested. 
Uh, someone is asking if you're a Manchester United fan. Yes, I'm a Manchester United fan because of one man. But I also look up to, Who? in the sports world, CR7, Cristiano Ronaldo. Is the true definition of perfect practice makes perfect. And hard work will never go unpaid. So, do you get time to, uh, in your free time, to maybe, have you watched the League One? Have you gone to watch PSG play? No. In France, no. But when I was in England, I went and watched PSG versus Chelsea Champions League semi final. Yeah. I've always wow, I've been cool. a soccer fan. I used to play soccer as well. I played for Hannah in the post primary. I used to love soccer, but rugby surpassed everything and I loved it more. By those Hannah stories, eh? just that we are, we are going to save them for the part two, mm. but those Hannah stories, I'm sure you have a lot. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yes, I have, I have so many stories. Um, uh, K- Keziron is asking, are you going, are you going to Europe? I'm, I don't know how you're going to answer him on that. I'm in Europe already. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, looking through, um, Cage Arthur Ten says, uh, "Living legend." Thank you. What do you have to say about um, upcoming players? A message of maybe what they need to do to reach your level or even surpass your level. Mm, well, that is what I want for everyone. Mm. I want them out there to know that your background doesn't define you. No one can hold your destiny. So long as you're disciplined and you're working hard and you know what you want, you'll always achieve your goal. And not forgetting God. Yeah, uh, yeah that's very true. Um, there is someone here, uh, Louis Semuju is asking, do you do Chibala in, in France? Are you even allowed to drink? Mm. Chibala, I only do Chibala at Tadundu. I'm not a Chibala person as such. So, <laughs> here, I've not been to the Chibala, but it's mostly when people invite you for house parties and all, you catch up with the teammates. Yeah, that's mostly what we do here. Yeah, uh, yeah that's good. Aaron Paul 89 says, more blessings to you. Thank you so much, Aaron Paul. Ponde says, I feel your rugby. Thank you. Uh, Chigozi Patrick says that um, Chinele from Pirates Rugby should, should apologize. Ah, we were, that, that, that was part of the sport. You never know. He didn't intend it. Maybe it was... You know, when you're hyped up in a game, you can do anything, you know, for your team to win. So... That one, we we got over it and we moved on. And I believe it made me even, yeah, it made me even stronger. <laughs> Very true. Uh, adversities actually are the ones that, that put you in the direction yeah. you have. Because I remember before you broke before you broke the legs, you were you were actually just skinny tall with side steps. Yeah. But man, you went back to power. And we're like, now, how are we supposed to do, to, to defend <laughs> against you? I mean, you're now big. Ah, these unfair yeah, yeah. things. Hard situations make you tougher. Yeah. Uh, I am Kimeze is asking, how do you always feel on match days, most of a national team, before like Kenya games? Mm. How do you prepare and how do you feel? I don't have a specific way. I just... Take it on the way it has come. I want to be calm before the game, so I listen to music. And then when the match starts, I take every minute at a time and see how it goes. Like, I don't have a specific plan for for a game. So I just come into the game and take a minute at a time and try and give it my best. Every chance I get, I want to give it my best and see how it will come out at the end. So <clears throat> that is mostly what I do. Okay, so uh, let's take uh, three more questions, then we can allow you to go about your day, yeah. Philip. Um, 
Uh, for those who, that have just joined us, or those that have been with us, thanks. You know that we're going to be having a part two of this where we shall be talking in depth about his rugby journey. But for now, let me take three questions before we close this. Um, uh, there was an interesting question I saw here. Um, what are some of the aspects of your game that you hope to strengthen to get to the top? Mm, yes, it's a really good question. Mm, I'm not so much into a defensive player, but in the other way around, my coach told me I'm a defensive fullback because when I receive the ball, I do not kick it back. I want to attack. And then I want to work more on my defense because now I'm going to another level of rugby, so it calls for more of defense and also to become more stronger. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, uh, PJ, PJ from Pirates says uh, you've raised the bar for other players in UG. I hope the likes of Okia, Kisiga, Casito, Okane, Masa, Desire are watching and they can be able to emulate. Mm. Okay. I hope, I hope yeah, they are uh, picking. Just I hope they are picking a leaf. <clears throat> yeah, because we hope uh, your your movements actually are a start of something bigger for other t but, people. I hope to see guys like Ivan Mago, that is, that is actually, Akasito playing in you. That is what I want to fight for. I want to break that barrier that people tend to to think you in Uganda there is no rugby, you know. We, we, we managed to break through to Kenya thanks to the Kenyan clubs and Union for letting Ugandans play in the Kenyan rugby because <clears throat> it's the only way we can also get exposed to the outside world because Kenya, from South Africa and Namibia, they know Kenya more than Uganda. So <clears throat> it has also played a part, you know, when they hear this one is playing in Kenya and is from Uganda. So it also drives the message to someone else who is watching and thinking of maybe developing players here and there. And for also the Ugandan players, you should also find ways of exporting your talent somewhere, you know. Take it to, to Kenya, take it to South Africa. Give it a try because it's upon us to, to show the world what we have because when, when, they, when they talk about rugby in Africa, they stop on Kenya. And when you're in, like me, when I'm here and they ask me, where are you from? I'm from Uganda. They say, oh, hey, Uganda. Okay. Hey. When you say it's near Kenya, they say, okay, Kenya. And that is how they get to know that there's also another country that plays rugby out there. So, yeah. Yeah, um, actually, um, talking about that, I think it's, it's high time that... Uh... Ugandan players that really aligning themselves to sports management companies and have a who can be able to professionally do this, not just playing and then themselves they have to sign contracts because most times these guys get cheated in their contracts true. and they don't even know what they're signing. True, the true, time. true, true, true. Yeah, so um, by the way, uh, your contract with Bo had uh, it had uh, something to do with player development as well or player recruiting, something Bo like that? No, no, no. So that's why I told you, like, everything was, it was like they had already planned it. God had planned it for me, you know. So I had to share ideas with that guy, the new coach. He's called Arnold. Mm, I told him I want to help so much people in Uganda, you know, the rugby fraternity in general, if we can connect. And then he said, yes, we shall share ideas and see how we can do it. And that is what I've always wanted to do. I want to give back to Ugandan rugby because they are the ones that made me who I am, you know. Without them, I wouldn't be here. So I want to just go back home, at least do something. And I'm, I'm lucky this new club wants to do it. So I just want to make it a reality. Yeah, but I'm not raising my hopes high. I just want to take a day at a time and see how we can do it. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Oh, so quickly, the last two questions. Um, um, someone is asking, who's the best, full, who, in your opinion, who's the best fullback in the it's world? It's a sad one, but he's no longer playing rugby un union. 
is now playing rugby league, and mm. that is Israel Falau. To me, is everything I want to be. That's great. That's great to hear. Then uh, our last question for this chat will be: um, You've participated in so many leagues. Uh, which one was the toughest for you? <laughs> the Kenya Cup. <laughs> So tough about players that want to go to Kenya. What should they expect? Mm, if they want to get tough, let them go to Kenya. The Kenyan league will toughen them because it's not easy there. But I thank God I managed to get what I got in Kenya. And yeah, I want to also... <laughs> it's a tough one. It's a tough one. For now, because okay. I don't know what the future holds for me, uh, but for now, it is the Kenyan League, the Kenya Cup, more so. You know, God may, yeah. God may put you in in the in Super Rugby or something. Yeah. So let's wait. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, guys, thanks for joining us, mm -hmm. uh, Philip. I uh, thank you for your time as well. We hope to catch up on the part two soon. We shall be able to agree on a day okay. in our chats. So we can find out when it's convenient for you and mm. for us. But guys, thank you. And uh, we, I think we're going to be having these live chats more often. Such uh, the fans and people who just generally love rugby can get to know the sport more, get to know their players more mm. in depth. I want to make this to even not be mostly about rugby, but even other things in life. I actually wanted to ask you a question, Philip, but I decided mm. let me keep quiet. Next I time, next time. Mm. <laughs> Same. Yeah, because yeah, because so I'm guys, going um, somewhere and you, they're just waiting for me. But thank you so much for having me on your show. I just want to send shout outs to my family, my friends, and yeah, I love you all. Let's keep safe and stay away from, let's fight the virus together. Yeah. Bongo. I okay, salute so, uh, you. Yes, Philo. Hi. Yeah, so yeah. Philo. Okay, man. Okay, thank you so much for hosting me on your thank show. You. Have a good cool. weekend. God bless you. Yeah, you, you too. So, guys, thanks for joining. We appreciate uh uh, we shall be having this periodically, and uh, don't forget to follow on YouTube to uh, follow the uh, the Crater Sports channel. Don't forget to follow on social media: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Don't forget to to keep up with the blogs. Very insightful uh, articles from myself and Louis Samuju. Uh, there is so much content coming up, and we hope that we can all get uh, get out of this period. So, guys, just keep safe and um, adhere to the rules. Let's all pray that this lockdown ends. Cheers.